society's fault. Was turn I'm going to swap out while I'm talking to you all. Um, was the turning away from their gods or their god? Is this working? Yeah. I'll button up here in a second. Anyway, the turning away from their gods or their god. And he talked about a coarsening of the society as a result. Too many in the, well, not in the conservative movement, but those who fancy themselves Republicans, have told us for decades now, it seems, ah, you've got to abandon all those social issues. Get rid of all the social issues. Quit talking about God so much. Nobody around the rest of the country wants to hear that. And I always hearken back to the words of Ronald Wilson Reagan when he described the consequences of doing that and what it does to our society. And I think we can see evidence today of what happens when we do that. So let's not do that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Gipper and another one of the speeches he had given in front of Parliament, he also said he wondered about the shyness of those in the West for standing up for those attributes that had done so much to ease suffering across the globe, so much suffering in our imperfect world, Western civilization, our Western values. And he said, let us be timid no longer, as he spoke to Parliament. That's kind of my message to you tonight. Let us be timid no longer. It is time to stop sending representatives to Washington, D.C., who just look at the current administration and those like him as being not just another Democrat. Nothing can be further from the truth. And I think we all know that, and it's time we've elected individuals who recognize that, and not only recognize it, but do something about it. So that's, uh, that's about as much pontificating as I'm going to get into tonight from, uh, from the podium. We were, we were supposed to have um, HD 112 here, and I, I don't think we have... Guys, I just want to be very clear. We don't have anybody from HD 112, right? And so some of you... Okay, so there's nobody from HD 112 tonight. Okay, that's fine. So let's move on. Um, I guess we're going to start off with some uh, hearing from Justice of the Peace, Precinct 2. Uh, place one, speak for one to two minutes, and um, make sure you keep it up. Where's my Gayla? There you are. Hi. This is our timekeeper, folks. She she is she is the one who will make she is the one that will stare you down, infect your soul if you go over your time. So uh, keep your eyes on her. So let's let's hear from uh, Brian Hutchison first. <laughs> Somebody's got a microphone for you. Maybe it's me. Tend to know where the on button is here. Oh. All right, we're on. Okay, we get, it, now we're on. Absolutely. Well, good evening. First and foremost, I want to I want to say thank you for the for, to, to the Tea Party for putting this on, giving me the opportunity to introduce myself. As was mentioned, my name is Brian Hutchison. I'm running for Justice of the Peace, Precinct Two, Place One. Now, Precinct Two, Place One. What does that consist of? That's the cities of Garland, Mesquite, Rowlett, Sunnyvale. A portion of Saxe, a portion of Wiley, a portion of Dallas, and even a little bit of Bob Springs. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so it covers quite, quite, quite an area. You know, my wife and I uh, grew up in Precinct 2. Uh, but outside the, the short stint in College Station, uh, where we both graduated from Texas and we moved back home. <laughs> absolutely. You can Now that being said, the good Lord's blessed us with five little girls. And as you can imagine, our house is very pink, it's very lively, it's full of drama. But, uh, but, but absolutely, it's a blessing. We're very involved in our church. Uh, we attend the Pride and Drive Church of Christ. I've served as a deacon uh, at the church for several years. My experience, my experience is in business. I'm third generation in the family business, both retail and real estate. I've been blessed to do that. Uh, in addition to that, um, I served a, a, a short stint on the city council. Realized very quickly that nonpartisan wasn't really where I fit in. Uh, that, that being said, I've been actively involved in the community, helping citizens that otherwise couldn't help themselves. But tonight, I stand before you as a candidate for justice of the peace. 
we're, we're, we've chosen to run in this race based on uh, the desire to, 30 seconds, my goodness, we're flying. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. I'm running in this race uh, against the man that John Molly Price, Clay Jenkins, and Teresa Daniels plays. This gentleman's running as a Republican. He claims to be conservative. One of the first moves he made when he took over this court was to introduce same-sex marriage to our court right here in Precinct 2. I can tell you, as for me, I cannot and will not participate in such marriages. Thank you. Absolutely. I believe that, it, that although the Supreme Court did rule that same-sex marriage is legal, they did not rule that our justice courts have to perform them, and they surely did not change the First Amendment. That being said, Kim Paxton, in his ruling, KP0025, says the justice of the peace do not have to perform same-sex marriages if it violates their religious principles. Absolutely. God himself, at the institution of marriage, described it as one man and one woman. Anything contrary to that violates my religious principles. I'm going to stand strong for that. My time is up. I'd humbly ask for your consideration. I would ask for your vote, and please share with your friends and family. John Molly had his choice. I'm asking you to make yours. Brian Hutchison, Justice of the Peace, Precinct 2, Place 1. Thank you. Thank you, Brian.